productivity. You see and hear that word a lot these days. It has to do with getting the most done at the least expense. On the farm, it's no problem. Farm machine technology developed by John Deere and others has made agriculture the most productive sector of this or any economy. This productivity is flexible. The choice is up to the farmer. He can operate a combine as he wants to recover more or less grain, depending on his acceptable loss level and conditions. This had been a seat of the pants job. The operator set his combine to the acceptable loss level desired, then checked his indicators to see if this level was being maintained. But now, monitoring loss level can be more precise. The operator now has the Harvest Track Combine Monitor System. He simply sets the combine to his desired loss level, sets the monitor to correspond to this rate, then lets the monitor system tell him how he's doing. It eliminates guesswork and bother. But like any electrical component, it needs servicing. Let's see how it operates and what you can do to keep it running correctly to maintain targeted productivity. The Harvest Track Combine Monitor System measures grain loss through samples that pass over the cleaning shoe and out the straw walkers. Any change in loss rate is indicated by the meter on the control console. The most important single point to keep in mind about the system is that the operator sets the combine to an acceptable loss level first and then he sets the monitor to read this level. The system cannot and should not be used to set the combine loss level itself. By moving this switch, the operator can read the sample loss rate from the cleaning shoe, from the straw walkers, or from the shoe and walkers. The monitor tells him whether to increase or decrease ground speed in order to maintain the acceptable loss level. In this way, combine productivity is increased, giving the operator more crop harvested per day of operation. The system has nine basic components organized into four separate groups. First is the control console, by itself a group and component. It's located on the left-hand front corner post of the cab. Second is the preamplifier, an exclusive and unique device. It's found just ahead of the rear axle, inside the last left-hand upright side sheet. The third group has a trio of components. Three wiring harnesses that link all the components together and are used to operate the system. The fourth group has four components. A quartet of sensors. Two on the outer edges of the cleaning chute chaffer and two on the ends of the outer straw walkers. We'll start with these sensors to show you how the total system works. All four sensors are identical in operation and work on the same principle as a microphone. Here, sound waves vibrate a pad that surrounds an electromagnet, changing the waves into voltage signals. In the harvest track system, grains act like sound waves, striking the sensor and generating a signal. Instead of a vibrating pad, a centrally mounted crystal detects the striking grain producing a signal of a few millivolts. From the sensors, the signals pass through the first of the three wiring harnesses to the preamp. This is a special type of marine braid rope lay wire which cannot be repaired. If damaged, it must be replaced as a complete unit. Instead of a single wire of a certain gauge, this braid wire is composed of many fine wire filaments. This is used for both flexibility and more reliability, it won't break. But if sheared off, it cannot be soldered back together and so must be replaced. The preamp performs two functions. First, it separately sums the signals from the two straw walker sensors and from the two shoe sensors. And then secondly, it sends each unique signal through its own high pass filter. Each high-pass filter in the preamp eliminates signals below a cutoff frequency. Grain impacts generate high-frequency signals which pass through the filter. On the other hand, material other than grain called MOG generate low-frequency signals. These signals from stalks, stems, and chaff are filtered out. From the preamp, 
the pure signals are amplified to travel along the intermediate harness, the second of the three wiring networks, to the front harness. At the front harness is a split-off point, located under the left front cab corner post. One fork goes to the control console. The other delivers the power for the system. Power comes from the electric clutch circuit, so the system only runs when the electric clutch switch is engaged. The system ground also passes through this corner post connection and is fastened to the horn base. You'll also find a third wire at this junction. It's for the illumination light on the console. Inside the console is a voltage rectifier, which sends an 8-volt current to the preamp for its use. The rectifier and preamp have their own ground, plus a ground wire between them. That is the entire harvest track system. We'll stop the program at this point so you can review the material presented thus far. You may wish to use the technical manual for reference. Press the restart button when you're ready to continue. To operate the harvest track monitor, you first set the combine to an acceptable loss level for the particular crop and condition. Once this is determined, you next turn the crop selector knob to the approximate grain size being harvested. That selection is based on this grain size chart in the operator's manual, which covers the most common crops. Next, a turn of the sensor selection knob determines whether you wish to monitor the loss at the cleaning shoe, at the straw walkers, or the loss at all four sensors combined. Now, operate the combine at the acceptable loss level while turning the meter zone adjustment knob to position the meter needle in the center of the green zone. The needle position will change if there is any increase or decrease in separator loss. If the needle moves to the minus side, the combine is operating at below the acceptable loss level. In this case, Increase ground speed gradually until the needle moves back into the center of the zone to maintain maximum productivity. If the needle moves into the plus zone, the combine is moving at too fast a ground speed. In this case, reduce speed to bring the needle back into the center zone to maintain maximum productivity. The monitor also can indicate to the operator by moving into the plus zone if the cleaning shoe or a straw walker is plugged. It's important not just to operate the combine and forget the monitor. That is because crop conditions can change during the day. Moisture decreases or increases. Straw becomes heavier or lighter. Make occasional acceptable loss level checks to see if a combine adjustment is necessary. And if so, make the proper adjustment to the combine and simply reset the meter zone adjustment for the new crop conditions before going into diagnosis of the system. We'll stop the program at this point so that you can review operations before we proceed to operational checks. Press the restart button when you're ready to continue. To perform operational checks, begin by turning the key switch to the on position, but don't start the engine. Then pull out the electric clutch switch. Next, turn the meter zone adjustment fully clockwise. Set the grain size adjustment to the smallest position. And place the sensor selector on the cleaning shoe position. Now, with someone else in the cab to note the console needle, tap the outer edge of one of the cleaning shoe sensors with a hard object. You may have to strike it several times to get a reading. The console needle should move. Repeat the test for the other cleaning shoe sensor. To check the straw walker sensors, simply repeat the test with the sensor selector set for straw walkers. As a final check, turn the light switch to F, or field position, to check that the meter light is working. When all checks out, push in the electric clutch switch and turn off the key switch. While we're on the meter light, a point to remember is that the light bulb has to be replaced from the rear of the console. All other components, except the intermediate and front wiring harnesses, come factory sealed and must be replaced as units if they fail. 
Naturally enough, this all but eliminates repair time. But you can still do diagnostics. We'll get into that after we halt the program at this point to give you the opportunity to review the operational checks. Press the restart button when you're ready to continue. The technical manual details the service that can be performed on harvest rack. There's also a system wiring diagram. Using this harvest rack tester, you can isolate any of the nine system components which might fail. Some tests are conducted with the key and electric clutch switch on, but with the engine off. Begin any test series at the input and output connections of the preamp. Chances are the problem won't exist here, but it's the easiest component to reach, and so is the most logical place to start. Next, test the preamp and everything forward. We know that the preamp connections are sound. If a test of the preamp proves it to be all right, we next generate a signal into the preamp to test all forward components. If this does not check out, a console check is next. If the console checks OK, the next components to check are the wiring harnesses. Here, the place to start is the front harness junction behind the cab and between the preamp and console. Since the front harness joins the intermediate harness here, a test at the junction could determine which harness is defective. If all forward of the preamp checks out, then you can move rearward to isolate the problem. We know the preamp is good from previous tests. So we must check out all components to the rear through the preamp. Either the sensors or the rear wiring harness may be at fault. You can repeat the test procedure at any of the four sensor locations. Altogether, just a few simple diagnostic steps following the procedure in the technical manual will allow you to isolate any problem within the harvest rack system. The harvest rack system increases productivity and makes the job of maintaining an acceptable predetermined loss level easier. An important step forward in combined technology.